Welcome to this ECE 201 lesson titled An Experimental Demonstration of Superposition. When solving a, a linear circuit with multiple sources, the superposition principle means that we can solve for a desired current or voltage by considering one source at a time and then adding them together. We have on the board a circuit to examine. You'll see that it has two sources, VS1 and VS2, and three resistors. And suppose we wish to solve for the voltage across V3, which we are calling V sub O, V sub out. I'll turn VS2 off, that is set it to zero, find the value of V out just due to VS1, and then vice versa, turn VS1 off, turn it to zero, and find the contribution just due to VS2. To find the contribution just due to VS1, we can set VS2 to zero, and we can do that by replacing VS2 by a short circuit, because a short circuit has zero volts across it no matter what the current is. And now we see that we have a voltage source, a resistor network. We can say that R2 and R3 are in parallel. So that by voltage division, V out 1, the co contribution to V out from VS1, is equal to VS1 times the parallel combination of R2 and R3 divided by R1 plus that parallel contribution. And let's write that for later use here at the top of the screen. V out 1 is equal to VS1 times parallel combination of R2 and R3 divided by R1 plus that parallel combination. And for the contribution due to VS2, we replace VS1 by a short circuit. We turn the source off. We set it to zero. We see that R1 and R2 are in parallel. And so by voltage division, V out here, this is due to the second source, is equal to Vs2 times R3 divided by R3 plus the parallel combination of R1 R2. So let's record that on the top of the board as well. As so, and now we can say that V out total is equal to V out 1 plus V out 2. Just to make things simpler, let's make R1 equal to R2 equal to R3. So if all the R's are equal to one another, let's just say equal to R, then this simplifies to say that V out will be equal to V out 1 plus V out 2, which will be equal to one third of Vs1 plus two thirds of Vs2. And that observation and that expectation is what we want to take with us into the experiment. So let's go from the theory and the blackboard to the protoboard, power supplies, and voltmeter. Here's a physical realization of the circuit we looked at on the board. We have two sources of electrical energy, both of them functioning as voltage supplies. This voltage supply is a dedicated 5 volt supply, that is it's non-variable. And this supply, the larger one, is a variable supply. It can provide a voltage or a current of variable value depending on the settings on the instrument. Let's let the uh, 5 volt supply be V sub S1 and the larger supply will set to 12 volts and that will be V sub S2. And here's the circuit built on the proto board. We're going to have VS1 coming in at these terminals, VS2 coming in as so, and we have 1K resistors for R1, R2, and R3. So based on our superposition results, the output voltage is one-third times Vs1 plus two-thirds times Vs2, or five-thirds of a volt from Vs1 and two-thirds of 12 or eight, so a total of nine and two-thirds volts across V out is expected based on superposition. Let's measure the supply voltages. Instead of assuming that they're exactly 5 volts and 12 volts, let's take an actual measurement. 
For VS1, the 5 volt supply actually measures 4.98 to 4.99 volts. And for the 12 volt supply, we have a measurement of 12.03 volts. So both of them are very close to their nominal values, but not exactly. Now let's go to the output voltage, V out, which we expect to be 9 and 2 thirds volts. Well, we are measuring 9.67 volts, essentially 9 and 2 thirds volts. So the results are as we expect to within experimental error. So let's record the measurements that we have so far. Our two measured power supply voltages and the voltage across V3, which we're taking to be V out of 9.67 volts. So we'll remove the VS2 completely from the circuit for the time being. And we have replaced it with a short circuit. Just a wire going across the two nodes where the power supply VS2 had been previously connected. We now expect an output voltage across R3, labeled here as V out, to be one-third of VS1, or five-thirds, or one and two-thirds, and we measure 1.66 volts, essentially one and two-thirds volts as expected. Now we've reinstated power supply VS2, but we replaced VS1 by a short circuit, or set that equal to zero. And we shall measure the voltage across R3, the output voltage, and it's 8.01 volts, or essentially two-thirds of VS2, two-thirds of 12 volts. So now we can add to our measurement record what we measured with only VS1 was 1.66 volts. What we measured with only VS2 was 8.01 volts. And if we add the two individual results, i.e., if we apply superposition, we get 9.67 volts, the same thing as that we have obtained when both of them were acting together. But let's explore one other aspect of superposition in linear circuits. Suppose we look at the power delivered to R3. When both of these voltage sources are acting together, we had 9.67 volts across R3. If we look at 9.67 volts squared divided by 1 kilo ohm, we get a value of 93.5 milliwatts. What about the case when just VS1 was acting? Then we got 1.66 volts. That corresponds to 2.76 milliwatts. And likewise, when we had 8.01 volts, that's 64.2 milliwatts. Now, what I'd like to point out is that superposition does not work for power. It does not work for power because power is not a linear variable. Power goes as V squared or I squared. So although we have a linear system as far as the equations governing voltages and currents are concerned, and superposition works great combining the outputs for voltages and currents, that same principle does not work for power. This concludes the lesson titled An Experimental Demonstration of Superposition. We demonstrated the additivity property of linear circuits in a two-source circuit. The output voltage measured when both sources operated simultaneously was the same as when each source acted alone and the contributions were added. Thank you for watching, and as you apply superposition as a means of solving and understanding circuits, I hope this demonstration will have been of value.